Welcome to this week's retro. My name is Tracy. You can follow me on Twitter at Lady Leap, and I'm joined by my co-host Rob Ocell, aka Robo Cell on Twitter. And today we have a really amazing lineup. We get to join uh, Sarah, who is the director of marketing at Vistot, um, to talk about developer marketing. So anything you ever wanted to know, you get like a small little marketing MBA course on developer relations uh, later on in the segment. And in the subtweet, we are going to be talking about how to be negative in only the most positive ways, uh, how to criticize technology, how to criticize code, um, the etiquette that surrounds it and ways to just have more productive conversations that help people learn from the things that give you a hard time. And you and, can truly see JavaScript dad come out. Right there around. you go. Exactly. <laughs> and then in the double click today, we're going to be talking about conferences. We're super excited yeah. about conferences. We're excited for conferences to start coming back. The conferences we're going to be talking about today are still remote, um, but we are just excited about them and looking forward towards a future when conferences are back in session. We're almost there. <laughs> yeah. So as always, we'd love to hear your comments and your feedback. So as you watch the uh, as you watch the video, make sure that you leave a comment, make sure that you like and subscribe to catch more videos like this in the future. But without any further ado, Tracy, let's get started. <laughs> And now it's time for the subtweet, the part of the show where we talk about the things that, well, we've been discussing online and give you the information and context that you need to have better conversations about it in the future. And today, Tracy, we are putting on a smile and our happy faces and trying to just be positive. Um, no, we are talking about criticism in technology and the right ways to frame uh, criticisms, complaints, negativity in general. Um, there was an incident that on came Twitter, up recently like on Twitter, on Twitter and in life. So we're okay. going to take it both on the Twitter realm and off of the Twitter realm and just talk about criticism in general, because I think this is something that has been, it's, it's a challenge that all people suffer from. It tackles a lot of different cognitive biases. Um, but there was an incident somewhat recently, uh, where people criticized the pretty popular CSS framework, uh, in a mm -hmm. post. Uh, and then that became sort of a tete-a-tete, -tete, back and forth about the merits of the blog post, the merits of posting such criticisms, um, and then whether or not people should be negative about software at all, or they should only, like you know, like our moms told us when we were kids, if you don't have anything nice to say, don't say it. You know what I mean? That's what and Ken Dodds would say. That, that is what Ken, that's what a lot of people would say. It's what a lot of people build their brands on. Yeah. You know, and... I think a lot of people bring in a really interesting idea of this idea of toxic positivity, this idea that you can't speak about anything that's wrong. But you know what resonated with me and what I try to tell people when we talk about this is that oftentimes what can feel like an objective observation that you're making based on your own ex experiences is actually a very subjective observation. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of people don't properly pin what are the variables in that subjective uh, conversation. Mm -hmm. So, you know, to take it out of the criticism space and into the code review space, I always tell people my personal style in code reviews is that I don't tell people that what they're doing is wrong. I always assume I'm the one that's not informed. So in code reviews, I love to go to people and say, Hey, this doesn't seem to work the way I would expect it to work. What was the intention with doing it this way? And have you considered another way? Sometimes people go, I've never considered that. That's actually really interesting. I'll change it. And sometimes people go, yes, I did consider that. And these are the reasons why it didn't happen. And if I always come from a position of assuming that there's a good, there's a good reason that something is that way. The best. Assume good intent. Oh, yeah. And even if it's not good intent, just assume that somebody is competent and trying to do their best. I mean, you're there to be a backstop, but you're also giving them an opportunity to present fully their case. And, you know, some people like to go into PRs and just throw flames, right? I mean, they're just like, this is bad. You don't know how to code, <laughs> figure this out. And, uh, you know, that can be really rough to work with, especially if you're like, I put a lot of thought into this. What you're yeah. saying isn't actually correct. And so what, what used to happen um, with a lot of these blogs and conversations on Twitter, especially if anyone was around for the bundler wars, 
was it? I mean, Tracy, you're a veteran of the era of the bundler yes. wars. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, everybody always likes to joke about the framework wars, but the bundler wars were way bloodier. <laughs> and people, every week there was a new bundler and that bundler would post a blog post that say something like, we are 100 times faster than Webpack. And they would go, Webpack people would say, well, can I see your Webpack config? Can I see the project you ran it on? Yeah. You know, people would do the same thing with frameworks. They'd say, I took this view app and I rewrote it in React and look at how much faster it is. And you yeah. say, can I see the view app you based it on? Can I see yeah. the React app you based it on? Yeah. Yeah. And oftentimes there's a lot of assumptions buried in it. Mm -hmm. A lot of in, you know, and then so people that are trained in these things go, well, I fix this example. I fix this example. Suddenly the hundred X is 50 X is 10 X is one X is 0.5 X or, you know, whatever they're yeah, about. Exactly. Um, and you know, so I, I just think there's a lot of subjectivity. I don't know your thoughts. I mean, I think like, you know, it's very easy as humans to focus on the negative and it's very easy for us as humans to say, well, this absolutely sucks you know, for, you know, whatever reason you have, right? But it's, um, it's more of a mental exercise to say, well, why did this happen? What were they thinking? Maybe I should ask questions, maybe I should talk to them, right? Um, so, you know, I mean, don't, I think what you say is right, like, assume the best. And also, we're all people. And I keep saying this, you know, in a, in a bunch of different, you know, podcasts and things like that I've been on. But we're all humans and whatever, like you are going to be wanted to be treated with the same respect that you give others. So don't put that energy out because if you do, you might get it back. And if you get it back, you're going to, you're going to understand. Mm -hmm. And you know, that's probably not going to feel good. I mean, and to be clear, I mean, a lot of the topics that we're talking about mm -hmm. in specific here, you know, you know, we're focusing on uh, criticisms and negativity about tech itself. When you bring in uh, criticisms about people's uh, conduct or their actions, I think, you know, a different set of heuristics, a different set of rules there, obviously. Yeah. Um, but, you know, when it comes to the tech, what we have to realize is like a very scientific mindset. Mm -hmm. So here is um, my advice to anybody that wants to talk about their negative experiences with technology. First of all, realize that it's a subjective experience. You have not proven yet that that technology does not work for all people. You've proven it does not work for the thing you're building for the team that you have working on it with your current level of knowledge. And you have to realize that there are many different reasons why a technology won't work. One, it's the wrong technology. In other words, you need a different library than the one that you were using. Two, you were using it the wrong way and you need to improve your skill or your knowledge about the tool. Or, you know, you need more than one tool. It wasn't sufficient to do all the things that you needed it to do. Or, you know, the problem is different than you think it is. So there are just elements of it that no tool will solve. So when you write a negative experience, it should be very similar to the way you write a positive experience. If you write a positive glowing review about a tool, you talk about all of the aspects of your problem and all of the ways that the tool resonated with that. And what you want to write a negative experience, you want to do a similar thing. Talk about all the elements of your problem and why, for some reason, the tool didn't work. Mm -hmm. And realize, just like the, the code review comment I was talking about, what you're really doing when you write that is saying, here is, to the best of my ability, my understanding of this tool's capability to solve my problem. Mm -hmm. And then the community, if they're good-natured enough, which, you know, depending on the technology and depending on the day, you don't know what you're going to get, but the hope would be that either people will come to you and say, I have some ideas that would work for your case, or they say, that's really interesting information about your particular use case. Interestingly, for my use case, it worked. Just like in science, this over time will develop into a body of knowledge, a body of learning that says, hey, this approach worked in these scenarios. It didn't work in these other scenarios. Someone will do a meta analysis and maybe it's all bad or all good or good sometimes and bad other times. It's okay for technology to be bad. It's okay to hate technology. Um, but we have to realize that our those negatives do not prove anything about the tech. They only say something, and it's not even clear what it says, about our particular case. And I think when people say to always stay positive, I don't think that's right. 
I think it's totally fine, right? Like, I mean, as a former Yelper, Tracy, you know, it's okay to go say you had a bad experience. Um, but, you know, maybe don't think that because your order got messed up one time that the place is completely rancid. Yes. <laughs> you know what I mean? Well, I leave very little Yelp, bad Yelp reviews. I mean, I definitely have left a few bad Yelp reviews, uh, but I'm usually like erring on the side of if I have nothing nice to say. I mean, I've left a few bad Yelp reviews, but I mean, Rob, it's so funny because when I hear you talk, I'm like, oh my gosh, you were like every year you get older and you become more a dad. Like, this is such data, which I love. Like it's such good dad advice. But I mean, I think <laughs> are you are you the new JavaScript dad? <laughs> but uh, you know, I, I I think I think all your points are very right, and I think also not bashing the people too, right? Like when you're talking about technology and you say this sucks, like you have to remember that people are behind that, and especially when you're saying that in open source, it's people who are giving away something for free, spending time away from their kids and family to provide something valuable to the world, right? So, I mean, you know, if anything, at least be thankful for that. <laughs> Absolutely. And I mean, I'm here to read your negative blog posts. Uh, I <laughs> like it because, I mean, honestly, we yeah. ask people all the time questions like in interviews or in conversations. Mm -hmm. Hey, that's a really cool tool. Are there any times when you wouldn't want to use that tool? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it is obvious that not all tools are good in all situations. And I think that's another thing that, you know, overwhelming negativity pushes people more into tribalism, right? Yeah. If you if you come and you take a broadside and say, I didn't like this tech, it's all bad then that activates a defensive mechanism and it gets people to say, no, our library is always good. But if people start to learn that tools have uses and other cases when the tools aren't as good, we're a little bit less tribal. We're a little bit less yeah. identified by the library that we use. And we start yeah. to realize like, hey, you know, on this library, I want React because I need some of these features. On this, on this project, I want Preact. Or on this one, I want Lit. Or on this one, I want Vue. And there could be a good reason to switch between these different libraries depending on the project. Um, and that's fine. There doesn't have to be the you one approach to roll the wall. Or, or tech. <laughs> whoa now, whoa now. Yeah. <laughs> no, I love it, I love it. And you know, I mean, we love this conversation and we definitely wanna hear your thoughts. Uh, make sure to leave comments in the section below. Hit us up on Twitter. Uh, RoboCell on Twitter for Rob and myself at Lady Lee. I'd love to hear your thoughts on, uh, you know. Send us your negative blogs. We'll do a we'll do a style analysis for you. Oh God, <laughs> Rob will do a PR <laughs> overview. Well, you know, you said this sucked, but let me tell you why it doesn't. It'll be great. <laughs>but not spelled like the car. Uh, yeah, and I've been in marketing off and on for almost 15 years now, which is wild. I kind of started in higher education. Um, so ed technology is still super interesting to me. Um, it's interesting to see the evolution of marketing as well now in this space of kind of the age of influencer beginning and ending. So it's been a really fun ride. And now I get to do my job here, which is awesome. Okay, so what can you tell us about the wild adventures of development marketing? Like what's different about it? Like what, you know, what what, what do you guys do? <laughs> <laughs> well, we do absolutely everything, which is really fun. And that's why I always say I'm never bored. Um, you know, everyone wants to know, you know, what it kind of looks like, like what is the, the little takeaways from marketing or DevRel. And I think it's super basic. I think what makes it interesting is that when people tell their story in a really authentic way, I think that's when people tune in. 
So you see, especially in tech Twitter, like everyone trying to kind of get their voice in there. They're trying to get engagement by saying funny things and maybe it gets a hit or two. But I think when you really get into it, the authenticity, even if it's like in a negative way, right? It's like if something hits a nerve, it's because people understand it, it resonated with them. So I think it's just basic storytelling. It's the who, what, where, when, and why of our lives. And when we're really passionate about something, which is tech, you know, that shows. But people know if you're not authentic, they know and they're yeah. not gonna tune in. So you're saying negative tech Twitter is good. <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. I mean, <laughs> good is a clarifier I probably wouldn't use. <laughs> But I think in general, I think in marketing in general, you know, you're if you're going to hit, you know, a, a nerve somewhere, it could be negative. It could be positive. Yeah. It really just does resonate with that part of ourselves where we're like, well, I would never do that. Or, yeah. wow, yeah, that's something that I would do. It's really a mirror of ourselves. So that's some deep right. marketing psychology for you. <laughs> I think one of the things which it might be an, a common misconception for some people from outside of the industry would be that all developers form a monolith or that all front-end developers do or all JavaScript developers do. Um, but obviously you've experienced, you know, depending on the framework that you're interested in or the topic that you're interested in, you get wildly different sort of engagement um, from different avenues, from different communities. Can you talk a little bit about that and maybe some of the things that have surprised you or that you've learned about the various tribes that we have in uh, development? Well, I mean, everyone is super, you know, beholden to what they work with, how they've experienced it. And that's, in general, that's so subjective. I mean, anytime we interact with anything, it has some personal value to us. But I do, I go back to this a lot. I saw this a couple months ago on Twitter and it said, not everyone who is in tech and are doing amazing things are on Twitter. I know it's crazy, it's wild. But you know, if we just looked at Twitter and we just said that this is what's happening in tech, we're losing so much. So I think just broadening our scope and you know, following some really good newsletters, following some really good blogs, seeing what other things are out there that some people might not be tweeting about a bunch of stuff, but it's still happening somewhere else. So that's what I've been kind of really excited about lately is what is happening off Twitter? Who is happening off Twitter? What can Why we learn from them? Is happening Why is happening off Twitter? Why is advice for your mental health? Hint, hint, Rob, who spends a lot of time on Twitter. Like, it's yeah. nice to... Because, you know, like typically newsletters and, you know, I mean, sometimes Twitter can be exhausting and sometimes it can be negative. And it's like, oh, I'm just here to, you know, not be negative. <laughs> um, it's hard, it's hard and, to strike that balance. You know, I think it's super valuable to be on Twitter. It's super valuable to see who's talking about what. There's brilliant, brilliant people yeah. that are tweeting. There's hilarious things on Twitter that make us laugh and we want to share. And then there's also, you know, a point of it where it's like, this is too much. So it's finding that balance. That is not, you know, an end all be all. That's like a personal thing of like where the balance is. But I think just crafting some sort of schedule to like get off, do something else, find another avenue on where people are talking. Yeah. Clubhouse. So I know... I'm not on Clubhouse, but. So yeah. I know a lot of people in developer marketing and just in marketing in general love to tap into humor, right? I mean, we joke a lot about like the Steakums brand and we, we have somebody who's a really good uh, marketer and writer on our team who we always joke is our, our upcoming Steakums tweeter. Uh, and so people like to leverage humor. Some people do it with just sort of uh, recyclable memes or common tropes. Obviously, you know, uh, this stuff does a lot with um, sort of you know, sometimes some some quite uh, intense sort of campaigns, the, the canned food mm -hmm. drive or code drive, excuse me. Uh, we did some sort of like Magic the Gathering style developer cards. Can you talk a little bit about how you balance humor, but still, like you said, the authenticity, still having it be, you know, some level of interesting and informative? You know, where do you kind of, how do you set a tone like that on a team? Yeah, so that's a really great question. I think, you know, as we are in the age of the influencer, I think it's changed from maybe 10 years ago, where brands had, you know, a specific voice, but it was a little bit easier. So now we're, we're really trying to be personal 
and it, it has its advantages, but we really do try to create a persona, especially for this dot media. We call it the fun Twitter. So the fun Twitter gets to engage with people. And really the only, only thing that we're trying to do in that arena is to encourage, especially junior developers. So Tracy, I know you said this once and I still use this on onboarding is we're bringing encouraging aunt energy. So that one aunt I love is it. <laughs> That is what we're trying to do. And I think just like letting the community know what's going on, you know, and trying to be as engaging as possible without feeling like, you know, we're trying to take over. So yeah. having room for everyone is really important. I love that. Well, thank you so much for joining us. Hope uh, y'all get to hang out with Sarah on Twitter and, uh, you know, ping her for any exciting things like, if you like this video, make sure to like and subscribe. And if you want to sponsor us, make sure to ping Sarah on Twitter. <laughs> yes, let me know. DMs are open. <laughs> thanks so much for having me. Uh, well, thanks so much for having Thanks so much for joining us. <laughs> Thank you both. And now it's time for the double click, the part of the show where we talk about some cool things in tech that we've been playing with or keeping our eyes on recently and tracy today we are going to be talking about conferences why are we talking about conferences because you know what we got our vaccines we know other people are starting to get their <laughs> vaccines we're getting excited about conferences even if they remain remote for the time being but just the idea of being any bit closer to people in any way uh, is super exciting so uh you know we wanted to bring people's attention to two conferences uh some schedules that are coming out soon so uh one of them is Google I.O. Google I.O. is always a must watch event to see uh, what things are going on in tech. Um, and so they release the schedules. That is definitely something we'll put a link down below so you can see. Uh, it's actually going to start uh, probably very shortly as of the time that you all are watching this because um, it takes place from the 18th uh, through through that through that week. And so you're definitely going to want to check out the segments. If nothing else, you know, you're going to want to catch the replays, see what's going on at Google, see what's going on with Chrome, see what's going on with uh, all the different frameworks that they got going on there. The new uh, releases. There's going to be some really amazing new releases that are coming out. So keep on the lookout. <laughs> Do you have anything that you want to spoil for us, Tracy? I can't spoil it. I'm under NDA. <laughs> <laughs> but there is just some really cool stuff. So, I mean, you should really look at it. I feel like uh, Google's, I don't know, like have all the teams really been focused on like improving developer tools, because that's kind of the theme I've been getting for the past few months or so. Mm. Um, so I, I'm really excited about some of the stuff that they're releasing. Do you know what the GDEs are doing to support? I know last year they did like this crazy virtual world experience where you yeah. could like go into and like do all sorts of activities inside of like a video game. I, I found Alex Russell somewhere, I think. I, I don't know. <laughs> That's fun. Banging on a tree or something like that. I can't remember fishing in a pond. Um, oh my gosh! No, I don't know what they're actually doing there. I haven't been paying up, paying attention to that part. But um, check out the schedule though, because there's definitely a lot of really cool stuff. And then also, Microsoft Build happens the, I believe, uh, May 25th through 27th. So not to be outdone. Right. And, uh, you know, that's going to be amazing, too. I always love what Microsoft comes out with. And, uh, you know, all, I mean, they're really focused on developers, I feel like, as well these days. Um, and then a community conference is Magnolia JS, uh, which, you know, uh, the start is sponsoring. We're super excited to do so. I'll be speaking there and hosting a few panels. Um, I love that it's run by a woman. So, you know, sign up for Magnolia. Uh, it's free for everybody, which is also really amazing. If your company wants to sponsor, she's still looking for sponsors and, uh, you know, she's doing an amazing job. It's like literally a one woman shop. So it's a great conference to support. And it's also, um, when, you know, when events go back to being fully live, it's a really fun event to attend. The yes. smaller conferences you and I have had a chance to be a part of in the past. You know, I love a big conference. I love NGConf and I love all the pomp and circumstance that goes on with that. But right. you know what? Some of these conferences that have like a hundred people or a couple hundred people, I mean, yeah. you went to the RxJS one that was in like an auditorium in like Vegas or whatever, yeah. wherever that was. And just, you get to meet such a density of people. It's such a different pace 
Um, you know, so local conferences. Like so much more. Sometimes it's like almost sometimes a little bit more authentic. You know, like speakers mm -hmm. are more chill. Um, yeah. I love it all. So hopefully we see you at a conference soon. But I mean, check them out. You know, check out Microsoft Build, check out Google I.O., check out Magnolia JS, especially um, because, you know, community, it's a community run conference, which needs community support. Uh, and, you know, we hope to see you at a conference sometime soon in the near future. Um, and if you know of any conferences that are coming up, you know, we definitely want to do shout outs. So make sure to ping myself or Rob on Twitter and we'll be able to like get them in the next episode. And, you know, especially if you're hosting a community conference, we definitely want to be able to support you. Absolutely. Thanks everyone for joining us on this week's retro with myself and Rob. We hope you all had a lot of fun. We definitely did. Uh, we want to hear about what's going on in your brain. So make sure to leave some comments and what do you, what do you smash that like button, subscribe, all those things. But yeah, I mean, we'd love to know what you think of this and you know, other content that we should be featuring. Yeah, what is the best marketing um, the marketing campaigns that you've seen online or the ones that really resonated with you? Or what do you think people aren't doing enough of? You know, what conferences are you most excited to attend, if not this year, hopefully next year uh, in person? And, you know, when you, uh, you know, think about, you know, how, what do you think about positivity and negativity in the tech space? You know, is there a way to criticize uh, tech and code in an appropriate manner? Make sure you leave all your thoughts down below because, again, we love to hear it and respond to it. So. And Tracy, as we wind up, I just wanted to say that with all the excitement that's been going around with the Dogecoin, with Elon Musk on SNL, you know, everything has been in the news. I finally decided I, it's time for me to jump in. And I went out and I bought a large shipment of avocados because I am now a firm believer in the guac chain. Okay, that's cute. I approve. <laughs>